true love, murder, and a corrupt justice system. We're not talking about the people versus O.J. Simpson. This is Brawl in Cell Block 99. <laughs> Brawl in Cell Block 99 is a 2017 crime drama written and directed by S. Craig Zoller. This is the same guy who wrote and directed Bone Tomahawk and Dragged Across Concrete. Cinematography is by Benji Baskey, the same guy who did Holidays, Dragged Across Concrete, and Bone Tomahawk. It was edited by Craig Diario, the same guy who cut Fast and the Furious 6, Bone Tomahawk, and Dragged Across Concrete. Music is by Jeff Harriet and S. Craig Zoller. Not only does he write and direct, he makes music too. As always, in this movie, as in the other S. Craig Zoller movies, the cast is pretty stacked. You got Vince Vaughn, Udo Kier, Gino Seegers, Don Johnson, Jennifer Carpenter, Mustafa Shakir, and many more. So Bradley is a down-on-his-luck ex-boxer who gets laid off from his job as a tow truck driver. On top of that, his marriage is crumbling before his eyes, so he takes a job as a drug courier. On one of his gigs, some things go wrong and he has to go to prison. Unfortunately, while he's in prison, he finds out that his wife has been kidnapped and unless he does what he is told, she will be killed. So as you guys know, when I talk about movies, I'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. That being said, let's start with the good. I really like Vince Vaughn's character Bradley in this movie. He's this huge, hard man who also has like this soft spot. He doesn't show it a lot, but when he does, it's very subtle. It's, it's nuanced and it kind of makes sense for this type of a guy. Pretty much right away, you can tell that he had anger issues and a bunch of problems in the past, but he's worked through them and now he's kind of calm and measured and he thinks about things before he acts. I really dig this character because I think I find a lot of similarities in him uh, that I have. I used to have a really bad temper uh, when I was in the state's custody. I was, you know, in the ward of the state because my parents weren't around and everything else. You know, I had a lot of anger issues and stuff. And one time, like, this guy looked at me wrong. I headbutted him in the face. Um, so, you know, my temper was really, really bad. And I've worked through all that. You know, I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty mellow now. Um, and when I do get angry, it tends to be pretty explosive, but it goes away fairly quickly. And it's the same thing with Bradley. He's calm, and when he's not, he's really not, and then he goes back to being normal again. There's a great scene earlier in the film where some stuff happens to him. He's been calm up until this point, and, you know, he just decides, I really need to lash out. I need to destroy something so that I can feel a little better at this moment. So he proceeds to destroy a car with his bare hands. He beats the hell out of this car and busts it into pieces like he's Ken from Street Fighter. Given the fact that this is an S. Craig Zoller movie, you know, the characters are pretty interesting and the dialogue is always clever, but not so much that it draws attention to itself. When it comes to Zoller's characters, you know, any of his movies, no character is one thing. And if they are, it's because, you know, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be this force of whatever they represent. But everybody else, other than these unmovable characters like, you know, Mr. Black Gloves or Mr. Grey Gloves in Dragged Across Concrete, Everybody has layers and they have reasons behind what they do. You know, even if somebody's a bad guy or a good guy or whatever, nothing is black and white. There's these shades of gray and he plays with that really, really well. And to me, that's realistic because again, not everybody is what they seem. And the thing about this movie is even when he's doing something like beating the crap out of a car with his bare hands, it always looks really nice. There's nothing that really draws attention to itself. There are some motivated camera movements. You know, the color grading is solid. It's just really shot well especially later on when it gets into a darker place, literally and metaphorically. No matter how fantastical or weird the premise or the things that happen in his movies are, he always keeps it grounded in reality, and I really appreciate that. And the fact that he does this really works because it gives you this good, solid escapism. It's a lot of fun, but it never pulls you out of the movie. And I think that's because Zoller has this kind of old school vibe to him. He's not on social media, at least from what I could see. He's a novelist. He's written like 50 screenplays. And even his screenplays, he writes like a novel. So the written word, the characters, the world, all of this really matters to him. And I think that's one of the reasons that he doesn't use a lot of music in his movies. He wants the characters and the dialogue and the actions that happen on the screen to speak for themselves. And he doesn't need music to push some, you know, vibe or agenda or whatever. And not only are his sensibilities this good mix of old school and new school, you know, his movies are too. This movie has a very old school feel to it, like a 70s, 80s exploitation grindhouse type movie, but done in a much slicker, streamlined manner. 
It's not rushed, you know, the movie really takes its time getting to know the characters, even like the warden or different prison guards, so that when something does happen, it has an impact with you. You see things that happen and you can tell that everybody on screen is affected by it. You know, maybe Bradley does something that he didn't want to do and he feels bad for it. He only flashes that regret for a second because he has this mission and he has to accomplish it. So that's the only thing that really matters to him. He has to kind of put his feelings to the side and do what needs to be done. So I love the pacing, I love the, the time that you get in different shots and scenes, you know. It's not rushed, it's not one of those, oh I have to put a cut in every three or six or ten seconds. That shot is there, and until the shot feels finished, it stays there. Now even though Zoller keeps his music to a minimum in his movies, when he does use it, it's done pretty well. It always complements the scene, or it has something to do with what actually happens. Zoller and the movie itself have a really twisted dark sense of humor, and I really dig that. I'm I'm a big proponent of gallows humor. As you guys know, I was in the military, I was a firefighter, I was a paramedic, so I've seen and been through a lot of things, so my sense of humor is much darker than the average person. Probably morbidly so, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do when you deal with these crazy situations, and that's kind of what comes across in his films. And this movie is no exception, probably more so than the others. It's really, really violent, but it never has this, like, dark and dreary and morbid feeling so even when the movie gets super duper violent like <laughs> crazy violent and you know often pretty gory you don't feel bad about it it's like the best moments of those big fights in braveheart where somebody gets hit in the face with a hammer and their face just explodes and you giggle because it's so fun to watch that's basically this entire movie and most of this movie takes place in prison actually a couple of prisons and what i enjoy is the fact that one of the prisons is the same prison from Orange is the New Black, which is kind of cool. But unlike a lot of movies, it doesn't skim over a lot of the important parts of being a prisoner, you know, like the intake scene. <laughs> the intake scene is pretty lengthy. You see everything that a new inductee into a prison has to go through. And the thing is, it doesn't do it like in a positive or negative way. It's just there, you know, and it shows how the guards act. It shows how Bradley acts and it shows maybe what you would have to deal with if you went to prison. Now, once he gets into prison and the violence commences, the extremely beautiful violence, the choreography is done really well. You know, it's not super intense and flashy. It's not trying to be a kung fu movie or whatever. There is a little bit of that element there, but it's more about, you know, brutality and getting things done as quickly as possible. But what I really like is almost everything is done on a wide shot so you can really see what's going on. So you can tell they really practice this choreography and it looks legit. It's really good. It's really fun. And again, it's really gory and violent. The sound design is pretty fun. It's pretty great, especially during the fights and during like kill moves and everything else. You know, and then you have the background sounds of the prison and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of thought put into the sound design. As always, everybody in the movie turns in a pretty fantastic performance, but I really dug, obviously, Bradley and Don Johnson as the prison warden. Don Johnson in this movie is just kick-ass. I love Don Johnson. I've loved him since I was a kid in the 80s, and my dad used to let me watch Miami Vice with him. Again, I shouldn't have been watching that show, but my dad let me, so thanks, Dad. Zoller's so movies are why I am a filmmaker. They're why I go to the movies. And a big part of that is the chemistry that he creates with his characters. You know, there's always an interesting dynamic, whether it be one-on-one, -on -one, you know, friend versus foe, or a group of people or whatever on screen. He always has this really fun back and forth. This movie has a lot of great setups, whether it be the movie as a whole or situations that Bradley finds himself in. Sometimes it's only one scene, but it's really fun to see how it starts and how it concludes. Even when somebody dies or gets hurt that you maybe didn't want to see it go down like that, or you don't feel too bad about it. There are a lot of good movies where somebody dies, one of the main characters or the main character. You really like them and you understand why they did it and you appreciate it, but at the same time, you still feel really crappy about it and wish it didn't happen, like Super or Children of Men, you know, those kind of movies where somebody important dies and it kind of just brings the whole film down a little bit. Something about this movie and with Zoller's other movies is even when somebody gets murdered or really hurt, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, and it doesn't drag you down. Well, for the most part, there is one of his other films where somebody gets murdered and it really sucks. But not in this one. This one, everybody who gets murdered pretty much deserves it. But with all that good out of the way, let's talk about the bad. Mm -hmm. 
I love the pacing. I love the length of the shots. I love that good long intro that really gets you into the characters. But many people, especially these days, because people in general, their attention span is so short. They just want to flip through stuff or fast forward through things. That's why Netflix has been looking at making it to where you can watch movies at one and a half to two times speed. Why would you want to do that? The whole point of shows and movies and books and music is to take your time and enjoy it. You know, it's seasoning for your life. It helps make your life better and more interesting and enjoyable that helps relieve stress. So why would you want to rush things? And again, some people are going to feel like this movie is a little too slow. Now that's those people's problems, but it is what it is. My only other real gripe with the movie is I love the violence. I love the gore. I think it's awesome. It's one of my favorite films I've seen in a long time where the violence is just over the top, but in the best way. As much as I love these practical effects, I love this violence and gore. Some of them definitely could have used a bit more time or a bit more blood. They were a little too clean, you know, and even though it's a fun moment and you're still like, oh man, it just kind of takes you out of that moment, out of that violent act a little bit. Maybe that's just because, again, I was a paramedic and firefighter, so I know what it looks like when someone's face gets smashed or, you know, their head gets taken off, their arms get ripped off, whatever it is. I know what it looks like. So maybe I'm a victim of my own experiences. And again, maybe for other people, they're going to think that this stuff looks realistic and fun. But for me, these moments weren't quite there. You know, even the final shot, it's fun, it's cool. But when you see it, you're like, yeah, that's fake. But despite those minor annoyances, this is definitely an instant classic when it comes to exploitation or grindhouse or prison movies or whatever. This is way up there in the top tier. And I think it's pretty fun. So with all that being said, what is my score? Drum roll, please. <laughs> 8 out of 10.